Thank you, Iona. Hopefully you can hear me, folks, as we move into the very final stages of today's event. Thanks so much for continuing with us. Um, Iona and Katrina are going to join Lorna and I on the, the screen. But Lorna, I wondered if I could ask you if you had any uh, summary comments that you wanted to make. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much, Charlie. And thank you so much. You've been an absolute star this morning. Um, I knew that you would be, be taking it all in your stride, but I didn't realise there were going to just be quite as many challenges <laughs> as have been thrown at you this morning. So uh, thank you so much for, for keeping calm and keeping everything going. Um, and uh, and also thanks very much to all the speakers. It's, it's been a challenge for some speakers who had difficulty hearing. Susan mentioned that Julie Murray was another, so I'm really sorry about that, that they didn't get a chance to hear all the other speakers. But thank you um, to all of those who, who have taken the time to present this morning and obviously pre-recorded, which was a big piece of work. And well done, Katrina, for um, managing to get through unscathed on the day. And to all the participants, we've had a wide varied um, group of people participating, uh, attending today, which has been uh, really beneficial. We've heard a lot this morning about the need to work collaboratively, and we also need to think about streamlining all the different national groups um, that are available, that are in existence and kind of looking at similar elements. So from today, we're going to continue these conversations, seeking pledges and commitments from people across organisations and businesses to work together to address the issues we've heard about today. Um, and what needs to be done is clear. Uh, from what everything what, from what has been said this morning we just need to commit to doing it and we need that vision and drive from the government that was mentioned by kevin stewart and reiterated by katrina there and also a change in focus on housing regulation i would argue and for housing to have a key role in the new national care service that iona has just mentioned and that it also needs the commitment and creativity of all of us to identify areas where we'll work together to change things that are pressing priorities for disabled people and older people and um, as we've heard but accessible homes and homes for life is for all of us and we need to work collaboratively to deliver that. So the speakers from today, um, we're going to meet again in a few weeks to plan future collaborations. And many of you will want to be involved in that too, pressing for change within your own organisations and lives. And it's for all of us to leave today clear about what we can do to make small and large changes to address the gaps in accessible housing and build on the momentum and the challenges that COVID and lockdown have laid bare. The recent report from the Social Renewal Advisory Board, which I would recommend you read if you haven't, sums things up nicely. If not now, then when? That's me, Thanks. Thanks, Lorna. Listen, I've got two other questions. I wanted to say especially a, a big thank you to uh, Katrina and Iona for uh, bearing with us and, and getting through the day. But Katrina, I've got a question very specific in terms of the review of the adaptation services. Um, Jill Pritchard has been with us throughout the morning. I just wondered if there's anything more that you could say, scope, time scale approach. Yeah, I spotted that in the in the questions bar. So, uh, in terms of in terms of the details of that review, we are uh, currently discussing the parameters with ministers with a view to getting that all read before they head off for the pre-election period, so that we can we can really uh, start to get that traction that we need in that work. Uh, in in terms of. Uh, people getting the opportunity to input absolutely uh, that I think you know today's discussions have demonstrated the value of, of bringing in a wide range of voices and that is absolutely the approach that we would be hoping to take and um, so I think that uh, the attendee list uh, from today could be a really useful tool uh, for us if, if people were willing to uh, be contacted in that way uh, and you know I think with an ad something like an adaptations review it can sound dry and process and a bit dull but when you, when you dig into it and when you look at the stories and the experiences that we have been hearing about today it just demonstrates how vital and important it is and actually how uh, how fun fundamental it is to supporting the the future view of the care system uh, as Iona was speaking about and really getting all of that right so uh, so a resounding yes to to involving people and um, not quite in a position to detail scope and, and time scales just yet but I hope that we'll be able to do so soon and, and Katrina whilst you're there there's a question from Donna about uh, housing need and demand assessments uh, now that's a really technical one for me, so I'm handing it over to you. Are you able to give us any background on that? Set and deliver targets for accessible yes, housing. 
Yeah, so I think this is something um, that we will want to be really closely examining. So I, I can't answer that here and now uh, today, but I think that, you know, the ambitions that I've been uh, describing here around improving and increasing accessible housing, we are going to need to, to revisit that and make sure that we get it right. Data on that, matching that up with people's experiences. Um, I think that the, the review of housing for varying needs could be a really important process for us here uh, and, and looking at how all of these things link together. So how, how can we how can we make that effective? I think that's an excellent question and one that we will need to be looking at. I don't have the answer uh, right now, uh, but yeah, absolutely a really important point to be making from Donna. Okay. Well, it's coming through loud and clear though is the commitment in terms of moving forward, Katrina, so that's great. Iona, I wonder if you had any final comments, any anything that you would like to say just as we move towards the end? Sorry. Quite, didn't quite catch that, Charlie. Just any final comments, Iona? No, I, I think yeah. I think it's been a really interesting discussion, and we've covered a huge range. But it seems to me that that it's the next few months really a good time to think about how how we link everything up, as I said in the presentation, and I think that's really important. And thinking about that. You know the strategic needs assessments that, that that should be done locally, and how we build build housing into that in a more um, substantive way, rather than something that's a separate exercise. So it just seems to me there's a huge opportunity here to join all of this up. So maybe Katrina and I will get together and talk about some of the opportunities. Thank yeah. you very much, Charlie. Thank you, Lorna. Fantastic opportunity. No, fantastic. And opportunities is absolutely something that's come through. Well, listen, Lorna yeah. threw out the challenge, if not now, when building on the social renewal board report. So it does feel like that opportunity has been opened up. Um, Lorna has got plans on Horizon, have got plans in terms of how to take the discussion forward and how to move in terms of all the information, evidence and, and, and uh, presentations that we've seen. There's such a resource here. So thank you, everybody. It's been a, an amazing morning and quite the experience, but I'm delighted that you're stuck with us. There's still 70 <laughs> people in the room with us. It's been wonderful. Lorna, thanks to you and the team for organising. And uh, we'll be in touch soon is what I would say.